in it. But what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing, my eye. I don't want you thinking I'm a busybody, but if someone comes visiting in my home and leaves near to tears, I'd like to know why. Oh, I thought I could do what Fiona wanted and live with Terry around, but I, I just saw him and John out by the pool. They were fighting. I can't handle that sort of thing anymore. I just can't. Now, just come in and sit down. It's all right. And whatever's going on outside, I'll deal with it. You calm down and wait for Fiona. Oh, come on. No, I know what I have to do. Nothing Fiona says is going to change that. Chill. Chill. Joe's here. He's in the house. He's got a gun and he's making crazy threats. Hell, how did he find us? He followed you from Melbourne. I better call the police. Hello and Tony are with him. He sent me to find you. First sign of the police and he says it'll kill them. What, do you reckon he would? Yes, I think so. I've seen him mad before, but never like this. If we're going to have a domestic, I think we ought to have it at home. This is that what you think this is? A, a domestic tip? We're splitting up, Patricia. I'm not going to change my mind, so you may as well leave. But it's all come out of nowhere. It's been building up for months. I was only trying to help well, you. Well, I don't want your help anymore. Now, go on. You're just making a fool of yourself. All right. You're so weak, I'm probably better off without you. Oh, don't look so smug. Has he told you who Andrew's mother is yet? Patricia. It's obviously a big mystery. I don't know what it is. Her name's Helen Green. Ring any bells? Ah, I can see that it does. Oh. Explain your way out of that one, darling. I can explain, Bobby. Well, it had better be damned good. Your first lover boy. You can do what you like with me, but my wife, she's got nothing to do with it. Anyone home? It's me, Terry. Yeah, Terry. Shut your mouth, boy. Glad you're here, mate. Look, 2020. What's going on here? Please, Joe. No! No! David! I'm going to hit him, Joe. Mother! Well, for God's sake, call an ambulance. All right, put him in. Will you be all right, Doctor? Both of them are very bad. Your husband has a better chance, sir. Can I come with you? I prefer if you stay behind. I'm sorry, but you'll just be in the way. OK, let's go. Um, I'll get the keys to the car. All right. Um, I reckon I'll stay with Mum a little while, OK? Oh, of course, of course. You are right? I'm fine, really, I'm fine. He's not going to die, Tony. I know he's not. Of course he's not. Let's go. Car's around the back. All right. And whatever happens, don't blame yourself. You've got enough problems to sit in. We have to take you to the station and charge you, Mrs. Parker. Do you understand that? You'll appear in the magistrate's court tomorrow morning. Now, the way things happen, you've got no worries about bail. And if Joe dies? Well, we'll worry about that when the time comes. Just between you and me, I'd be bowled over if the courts didn't go easy on you. Let's go, eh? We'll take your statement at the station. Don't say anything, Mum, till you've got a solicitor. I did it. What I say isn't going to make any difference. Tell you what, we'll wait in the passage. Give you a few minutes to yourselves. Why did you do it, Mum? We, we could have tackled him, me, me and Terry.
perhaps you'd like to speak with the gentleman who came with Mrs. O'Donnell. He's just popped out to get a magazine. Yes, I most certainly will, eventually. But right now, I want to see Jill. I'm sorry, I can't. Whatever your problem is, it'll have to wait until she comes out. Oh, here's the gentleman now. Perhaps he can help you. How could you arrange this? Of all people! You must have known what having a grandchild means to me. I think I probably do. How are you, Fiona? Hopping mad, Scott. Hopping mad. Now, how on earth did you get dragged into this? Jill called me. She told me what she'd been through and asked for help. But why you? My son is the father, isn't he? I assume what Jill said is the truth. Yes. I'm surprised you hadn't let me know before that he's still alive. It was up to Terry to contact you. Jill had no right to bring you into it. <laughs> Don't imagine I'm thrilled about it. But she's obviously desperate and it's easy enough to buy a solution. Well, there is no way I'm going to let her go through with it. Now, calm down. We'll talk Now, I want her out of there right now. She is confused and she needs advice. Stop, so really There's no wait, point I, in I, I, bursting in there. All she's doing is discussing it with the doctor. When the operation takes there place... There is in... not going to be an operation. If the operation takes place, it'll be in a few days' time under strictly professional conditions, no risks involved. You haven't changed one bit, have you? You're still the same cold fish you were two years ago. I'd prefer to talk about this later, when we're not in public. No, oh, we'll talk. Oh, we'll talk all right. I suppose you're shocked. Helen was so much older than I was. Oh, that must sound almost as lame to you as it does to me. Helen was my best friend. She was like a sister to me. And when she left with, with no explanation, no nothing, you've no idea how I felt. What does shock me, though, is how you've lied to me for 20 years. Helen made me promise not to say anything. She was terrified of you finding out about the baby. I think she thought that it hurt you more than her just disappearing. Why? You were already married, Stephen. You'd known Helen for years. I mean, how did it happen? She was unhappy at the time. I, I don't know why. I suspected a broken affair. But you know how she was. The perfect secretary left all her problems at home. Anyway, there was a conference. Dad couldn't go. He sent me in his place. Helen came too. We were alone for a week. Oh, and Stephen Morell, rampant stud that he was, couldn't keep his hands to himself. It wasn't like that. Oh, the whole idea of it just makes me... You have hurt so many people through the years because you couldn't keep your hands off women. Well, now you can add me to the list. Patricia wanted to cause trouble by telling you. You're reacting exactly the way she would have intended. Too damn bad. You shouldn't have come after me, Fiona. It's my life. There are two lives involved, young lady. Now, you can't kill that child, and that's what you're doing, whether you want to admit to it or not. I never saw you as a right to life, Fiona. Thank you, but we don't need you interfering. This is between Jill and me. Jill? All right. I've got your address. I'll meet you there in an hour. Fine. Oh, thank you. Well, let me know what you decide. It was wrong of you to bring him into it. I had no one else to go to. It's up to Terry to decide whether his father should know about it. Don't expect or not. me to worry about Terry. I needed help. I could have helped you. Oh, sure. I, I don't mean that this is not the sort of help you need. Yeah, well, I think it is. I tried to kid myself I could love the baby when it came, but I won't be able to. I know it. I just do. <laughs> It's my grandchild, darling. Yes, and it's my child. So I think I have a right to do whatever I want. I'm sorry. Now, now, talk to Matt Kennedy when he comes back. If you won't let me help you, listen Look, to I've him. Look, I've got all the help I need, so just stay out of it, Fiona. Jill! If you do it, I'll hate you. That's not fair, and you know it. Oh, damn. 
It is beyond my comprehension. It really is. It's your grandchild, too. Don't expect me to get sentimental about the child of a son I never even knew I had. When Jill first told me about Terry, all I felt was surprise. After that, especially when I heard what he was like, I, I just felt nothing. What do you mean, what he was like? He raped the girl, didn't he? Yes, but I'm... I mean, there's, it, it's more complicated than that. I don't see why. Uh, well, there is more to Terry than actually... I don't feel one way or the other about him, Fiona. I have my own life. I've got along very nicely without your Terry. All these years, I'll continue to do so. Aren't you at least curious? No. Don't try to impose your obsession with having a son onto me. What do you mean by that? May I? Oh. What did you mean by obsession? Do you know what I remember most about our time together two years ago? I can't imagine. That day at Mumbai, when you told me that there'd been a baby, our baby. That was, that was very moving. At least you're not cynical about that. I don't think I'm a cynical person. I'm practical. Well, perhaps that comes across as cynicism. I was moved then because you and I share something, the memory of our original affair. That first argument in the domain, hmm? the evenings we spent together, even the unpleasantness of our breaking up. It was all those things coming back that got to me as much as anything else. That's why I cared. That's why you meant so much to me after nearly 30 years. And that is why I cannot feel anything about Terry. I don't know him. We, we share nothing. And if that sounds callous, well, I'm sorry. Whatever happened to the man I loved? If that's your attitude, then Terry's better off never knowing you. We're both better off without you. But if you want to opt out of seeing him, then opt out of his child's life, too. Leave Jill to those who care about her. We'll make quite sure that she's well looked after. When I start something, I finish it. I don't think there's anything more to be said, Fiona. Goodbye. John, I wouldn't go through there for a while if I were you. Fiona's had a bit of an upset. Oh, uh, I didn't see you. What's wrong with her? Oh, just a few problems, that's all. Nothing to do with our argument, is it? Did you argue? Earlier. Well, she didn't mention it. No, it's not that. Right, well, uh, you don't mind a bit of company, do you? Feel free. <laughs> mind if I have a look? I like old photos. Oh, I don't think there's much that would interest you in here. At best, all you get is a laugh out of a rather fresh-faced Stephen. <clears throat> I could do with one. Sorry? I could do with a laugh. Oh, all right. Well, there's my baby brother at the age of 22. <laughs> same age as me, eh? Almost. No, same age. Well, it's not for a few days yet, your birthday, is it? Oh, it's not today. Mm-hmm. Oh. John, I'm sorry. I know Gordon sent a card to Angela, but that was only yesterday. I assumed he was sending it a few days in advance. Trust him to be running late. Oh, don't worry about it. People forgot who've got a lot more reason to remember than you have. Oh, that's awful. You poor kid. Just goes to show how the family's drifting apart. Well, oh, there you go. Thanks a lot. Well, now you feel lousy, I feel lousy. And that's one hell of a reason to celebrate. We are going to share a bottle of champagne. It's OK. No. Well, we've got to remember Angela too, you know. It's her day also. Thanks.
Barbara Hamilton. Uh, Barbara, it's Beryl Palmer. Is John there, please? Yes, hold the line, Beryl. It's for you, birthday boy. Looks like you started feeling sorry for yourself too early. <laughs> Hello, Mum. Hello, love. Uh, I've got some bad news, I'm afraid. It's your dad. There's uh, been some trouble. He's been shot. They've, they've operated on him and he's in intensive care. What, what, do, you, what do you mean? Was there an accident or something? I, I'd, uh, I'd rather not go into it on the phone. But he, he is pretty bad, though. It might be an idea if you come down here. Of course. Uh, which hospital is he in? Uh, the local. I, I don't understand. Which one's the local? Oh, uh, I, I'm sorry, love. Uh, we're not at home. We've been staying at Mumbai. There's, there's been some things that we didn't tell you because we didn't want you to worry. Uh, it might be an idea if you just get here as quickly as you can and I, I'll explain to you, explain it to you then. Yeah, sure. Uh, are you OK? I, I'm all right. It'll be a lot better when you're here, though. Yeah, um, I'll be there in about four hours. Bye, love. What? Dad's been shot. Shot? Well, that's all I know, other than um, they're staying at Wombai. Could I borrow one of the cars to get there? Oh, yes, of course. And take the Volvo. The keys are in the study. Thanks. Um, do you think Fiona ought to go too? Um, well, if what you said's right about her having troubles, I don't think we should drag her into it. Um, nothing she can do. Well, if it happened on her property. I didn't know that it did. They're staying at Wombai, but Mum didn't say where it happened. Um, I'll call her when I get the full story. I'd rather you didn't say anything until um, I do, OK? All right, fine, if that's what you want. It is. You're doing the right thing. If you stay here, Fiona will just make a pest of herself. Yeah. Have you got everything? I think so. Look, if you don't want to stay at my house, I could book you in at a hotel, though. I don't think you should Your be alone. Your place will be fine. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You're the last person I should be taking it out on. My alarm clock. What are your plans after the operation? No idea. I might be able to help you with work. You've helped me enough already. Look, I don't like you very much, and you don't like me. What happened between us two years ago makes me pretty sure of that, right? So just help me over the next few days. That's all I want. You'll be out on your own, you know. From what Fiona says, if you go through with this, she won't want a bar of you. Well, when I first came to Sydney, I was on my own. I survived then. You, w you wouldn't go of back... Of course not. But I'll manage. Let's go. The shooting from the report of one eyewitness came after the group had been held at gunpoint by prison escapee Joe Parker. Parker's wife has been detained by police and will appear in the district court tomorrow morning. The conditions of both men were described by a hospital spokesman as critical. In Victoria, two of the men who escaped from prison at the same time as Parker were caught today by police in dense bush outside Orbost. Only one man remains at large from the original four escapees. And now sport in Sheffield Shield cricket, West Australia. It's shocking. You read about it every day, but you never think it's going to happen to friends of yours. Mm. Now it's on the news, perhaps you should tell Fiona. Oh, I think I'll leave it till tomorrow. She said she wanted an early night. And I think I shall do the same. I can't talk you into a nightcap. No, thanks. This thing with Helen, it's a bit like having a carcass in the middle of the living room. I mean, you can only walk around it for so long, pretending it's not there, but eventually it's going to stick the place out. Is that supposed to be smart? No, I thought it was rather apt, actually. I want to talk about it, and you're not helping. Right. I'll get over it by trying to forget it. At the moment, I'm a bit too hurt to do anything. Good night. There you go. Thank you. Have you any idea where Tony got to? Ah. Probably trying to get some circulation going in his backside. It's a bit like that, isn't it? I don't think I've sat in one spot for so long in years. Love. Mm. 
How are you? Oh, I'm all right. It's good to have one of the family here, though. I really planted my foot to get here. How's Dad? Uh, stable, they say. I always worry when they say things like that. I know what you mean. John. G'day. Well, now you've got someone with you, I reckon I'll be off. See you in the morning. All right. And thanks very much. I don't know what I would have done without you. He's a nice man. He kept me from cracking a couple of times. Good. Uh, anyway, tell me your side of it. It's some on the car radio, but I'd love to hear it from you. I'm sorry, no visitors. Yeah, I, I know. I was just wondering how he's doing. Pretty much how he was last time you asked. We'll let you know if there are any changes, either way. Come on. There's, uh, there's not much more to it, really. It was all over in about ten seconds, like some terrible nightmare. If, uh, if Terry hadn't arrived when he did, we'd all be dead, I'm sure of it. Yeah. You'll pull through, Mum. Oh, I'm sorry, love. It's probably not the right time to say it, but I just remembered. Happy birthday. <laughs> Love really 